Earlier, I made a video about my views of Apple Silicon from a Linux user perspective. And as intriguing as the hardware was, I kind of figured this was going to be a no-go because in my mind, I was assuming this hardware is going to be really tightly locked down because that's something that Apple is notorious for doing. They lock down their hardware so good just to run any unsigned code on their iOS devices requires um, often, you know, rooting the device or jailbreaking, however you want to view it. And then even sometimes I think you still need to boot it with a separate machine. And then once it's booted up, it can run on its own. And those are like, those are kind of out there. So when I was looking at the idea of Apple Silicon device as a Linux user, I just made the assumption that it just was not going to be a, a way of doing it. It turns out that I was very wrong on that one. And there is actually a group that is trying to get together to build a Linux operating system that will boot natively and efficiently on the Apple Silicon hardware, starting with the MacBook M1 chip. So if you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I'm a uh, hardcore ThinkPad enthusiast, ride and die ThinkPad guy. And part of that is because of the affordability of the used hardware is phenomenal. And the fact when you get the hardware, it's easily upgradable and um, just really well-made devices. And personally, I really like the look of a nice ThinkPad. Having said all that, my intrigue in the Apple Silicon is less to do with Apple per se, but with the idea of leaving the x86 architecture because I feel like, well... Risk architecture is going to change everything. Yeah, risk is good. Risk is the future. Everyone knows that. And I feel like if I could get into the risk ecosystem, I have a feeling not only we have better battery life, potentially more horsepower with 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 less energy. It just seems like a better win all around. And so when I saw that they are building Linux for the M1 chip, I feel like that's going to be the easiest way providing the project gets finished that the average Linux guy like myself could deep dive into that ARM architecture without leaving any power on the table. Because right now, that's the fastest chip on the market for, for ARM and possibly for other things. This project is called As Asashi? Asashi Linux. I think it's how you pronounce it. Asashi Linux. And Asashi Linux aims to bring you a polished Linux experience on Apple Silicon Max. Let's dive a little deeper into their about page here. Asashi Linux is a project and community with the goal of porting Linux to Apple Silicon Macs, starting with the 2020 M1 Mac Mini, Mac Air, and Mac Pro. All right. Our goal is not just to make the Linux run on these machines, but to, but to polish it to the point where it can be used as a daily OS. Doing this requires a tremendous amount of work as Apple Silicon is entirely undocumented platform. It's very important to point out, undocumented platform. In particular, we'll be reverse engineering the Apple GPU architecture and developing an open source driver for it. This is actually a bit of a game changer, especially if this project can get off the ground. Asashi Linux was founded by Hector Martin after the launch of the first M1 device. All right. So in my head, this is not going to be blessed by Apple in any way, shape or form. But if this project has enough development behind it, this could easily make the Apple M1 processor chips as a Linux user quite, quite nice. And, I, and, I, and, I, and you're probably thinking, OK, but this is one distribution. I think if we go down here, here we are. Is this a Linux distribution? Asashi Linux is, is an overall project to develop support for these Macs. We will eventually remix Arch Linux ARM. 
So, Arch, by the way, running on the Apple M1, which is only a matter of time before all those, you know, go upstream. And I potentially in a year or two, I could see myself running Debian on one of these devices. And that is very exciting. That's the coolest thing that Apple has ever done is just simply not lock this hardware. Package for the installation by end users as distribution of the same name. Yada, 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 yada. All right, here, here's the thing. Does Apple allow this? Because they usually lock things down. This is this is where I was wrong. This is what I thought. Does Apple allow, oh, sorry. Apple allows booting of unsigned custom kernel on the Apple Silicon Macs without jailbreak. That's right, baby. We have a regular bootloader situation right here. This isn't a hack or an omission, but an actual feature Apple built into these devices. That means unlike iOS devices, Apple does not intend to lock down the OS you can use on Macs, though they probably won't help in development. That's an understatement. <laughs> um, Apple uses a lot of Linux in their, um, in their infrastructure, but it's all server end. They don't do any desktop Linux stuff at all. Um, they don't even, they don't even have that in their, 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 their timeline as far as I know. Um, is this legal? That's a very important question. As long as the nose code is taken from Mac OS to build the link support, the results are completely legal to shoot for end users as it would not be derivative work of Mac OS. This is no different than when they build drivers for ARM chipsets or x86. Um, so yeah, th this is very exciting, very cool stuff. And if you're a smarty and you already have one of these M1s laying around, here's their GitHub, which I will link down below, a GitHub to their entire development, the GPU, VDM tool, um, the Linux kernel, of course, there are themes and docs and such. Very exciting. I don't know, again, this all lays, hmm, let me switch here. This all kind of lays on the idea that if people get involved and people build these tools, then it will be successful. And if no one gets involved, or I think right now, they, 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 don't, they only have two people officially working on this. Um, but if no one gets involved, we're not gonna see this happen. Um, if you are interested in going this direction, would I buy an M1 Mac now to get on board with this? That's a kind of a tough one because on one hand, I'm thinking to myself, you buy a Mac M1 now, as soon as it's ready, you can go, but I'm sure there's going to be a long bumpy road ahead before there's anything remotely usable. And now, tinfoil hat on my paranoid side of my brain says maybe you should buy one of these now and just kind of sit on it because i'm always going to be kind of worried that that unlocked bootloader situation will suddenly disappear one day when apple decides no we don't want you to have an open bootloader <laughs> we don't want you to run linux on our apple silicon so i think personally for me because of the, the price restrictions and i'm already in the market for potentially another thing pad. Um, I will wait. I will wait. And if they lock down that bootloader, it was never meant to be for me. Uh, but it's definitely a project worth keeping your eye on. So let me know in the comments below if Linux was available for the Apple M1 chip. Would you jump on that? Are you going to buy the M1 now and then sit on it or heaven forbid use it as is um let me know in the comments below i need that sweet sweet engagement and if you like this video give this a thumbs up if you don't well you know and if you really like what's going on here give me a subscribe follow me on this platform i'm also on uh peer tube and odyssey so links down below for that and uh have a good night and i'll catch you guys on the next one